A warm welcome to all of you. I uh, invite our principal, Dr. P. Devasundari Ma'am, to welcome the gathering and the speaker of today. Thank you, Dr. Deepa. Uh, esteemed uh, guest speaker of the day, Dr. M. L. Mujal, Professor Emeritus, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and AACTE Distinguished Chair Professor. Uh, my colleagues and all other participants who have joined today for this webinar. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, before I formally welcome the gathering, I wish to say a few words about our institute for the benefit of the guest as well as the participants. KCG College of Technology was founded in 1998 to fulfill the founder chairman Dr. KCG Verghi's vision to make every man a success and no man a failure. We are affiliated to Anna University Chennai and we are approved by AACT New Delhi. I take immense pride to mention that the college is accredited by NAC with A plus grade. Four of our undergraduate programs have also been accredited by NBA. The college is also ranked among the top colleges under the category of engineering in NIRF for the second consecutive year. Uh, we, we are also ranked in top about, among the affiliated colleges by the top magazines of India. We have also received band excellent in Atal ranking of institutions on innovation achievements, ARIA. Our students also participate enthusiastically in curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular activities and we bring, we bring laurels to the institution. Our participation and accomplishments in Smart India Hackathon organized every year by AACTE and MHRD needs a special mention too. And also we have, we are a proud uh, winner, award winners of AACT Chatra Vishwakarma Award, Leelavati Award and AACTE CAA Industry Institute, Best Industry Institute uh, Connection Award. An institution in the field of technical education for more than two decades the staff and students of KCG College of Technology are truly honored to host this session today on creative thinking. A special thanks to AACT for such initiatives in connecting the technical institutes across India, bringing together all the experts from different fields and such unique initiatives to build the skills of the faculty and students on all possible ways. We are very thankful to AACT on that regard and also the professor today who has uh, uh, who patiently waited till now and uh, has been coordinating with us at every stage. You are truly an inspiration for all of us, sir. And uh, we always discuss about how uh, uh, immediately we get reply from you and um, how enthusiastically you uh, take the sessions also for us. Thanks again and a warm welcome to all of you and to the special guest today. Once again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Over to you, Deepa. Thanks a lot for the wonderful welcome speech. Uh, let me introduce myself as Dr. Deepa Jo, the head of the Department of Sponsored Research and Consultancy. And I would also like to tell that KCG College of Technology is a nodal research center of Anna University. And there are many full-time and part-time scholars from Tamil Nadu and other states for pursuing and registered the, for PhD at our research. <coughs> uh, so creative thinking is the topic for today. And uh, as faculties, I think it's an invaluable uh, skill that all of us should possess uh, since it helps us to look at problems in a very new and different perspective. And as far as uh, my uh, opinion is that uh, the creative thinking will expand and uh, our thinking process and help us to come up with new and unorthodox way of solving problems. With these few words, let me introduce the speaker, distinguished expert speaker, Dr. ML Munjal Sir, Emeritus Professor from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIC Bangalore. Sir has completed a master's and PhD from IIC Bangalore. Sir is a member of the Science and Engineering Research Council of BST, Technology Advisory Board of CSIR, Board of Research of AICPE, and Sir was a Vice President of the Indian National Science Academy between 2011 and 2013. Sir is a governing council of, in the governing council member of the Indian National Academy of Engineering and editorial board member of many high impact factor journals. Sir has achieved a lot and uh, Sir has published more than 213 journal publications and uh, 145 conferences Sir has attended and participated. And there are two patent disclosures and one copyright. Sir has written various books, recent books are Acoustics of Ducks and Mufflers, 
uh, the John Wiley and Sons publishers and noise and vibration control by World Scientific Publishers. SIR so have carried out successfully more than 100 uh, consultancy projects. SIR's so research interests on muffler acoustics, industrial and automotive noise control, acoustics of ducts and mufflers. SIR so has received various awards. I am only listing out a few uh, due to the lack of time. A few among them are the Jawaharlal Nehru National Award in Engineering and Technology for the year 2010 from the government of Madhya Pradesh. The DRDO Academic Excellence Award in the year 2009 at the hands of the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. Sir so, C.V. Raman Award for the year 2007, the G.P. Chatterjee Memorial Lecture Award, and uh, the S. Narayanan Memorial Lecture Award of the Acoustic Society of India in the year 1995. Sir so, is a distinguished member of the International Member Institute of Noise Control Engineering, USA. And Sir so, is the only Indian so far to be conferred with this honor. Uh, Sir so also received the Shanti Swarup Patnagar Prize for the year 1986 at the hands, received at the hands of the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. And in 1975, Sir has received the Science Academy Medal for Young Scientist in the year 1975 at the hands, received at the hands of the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Mrs. Indra Gandhi. And above all these achievements, I know Sir as a very humble person who possesses a wonderful personality, very helpful in mind and with a very positive outlook. So we all are waiting for your lecture. Can you waiting? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Deepa. Uh, I hope, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, very clear. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And thank you, Dr. Sundari for, you know, uh, such a nice introduction. And I'm very, I'm very happy to hear about the achievements of your college. And I must say, you know, it's a really pleasure to be associated with your college in whatever capacity. Okay, so now I'll, uh, I'm going to, I'll just share with you first the screen, just. Okay, sir, we can view the screen. Yeah, can, can you see it? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, friends, I'm going to talk to you about a very important subject. Uh, I've just uh, called it towards creative thinking. Uh, and uh, you will find that uh, it is based on my uh, personal experiences. And in a way, that really gives, gives you an insight into uh, how I developed myself. And I hope that whatever I share with you today, it will really be useful to you and your associates. Now, during the formative years, uh, we tend to associate productivity with conducive or competitive environment, the best of resources, world-renowned professors, and inspiring traditions. In this privileged journey, however, we overlook the creativity of the pioneers at the old research universities like Indian Institute of Science, who did not have any of the present day resources, but still created formidable reputations for themselves as well as for their institute. Now, what is creative thinking? How can it be sharpened or augmented? Let's see. My most important advice to you is challenge yourself, you know, for developing self-confidence. This is the start of the whole thing. And incidentally, this was the topic of my first lecture that I gave a few months ago uh, at your college. Now, this is the best way to develop your thinking or brain power. Inculcate the habit of asking yourself about the solution or answer before looking it up in the book or paper. If you cannot, get a clue and again challenge yourself. This approach can make the literature survey phase of research a great fun. In this way, you will develop self-confidence and retain the initiative instead of getting overwhelmed by the author of the book or paper. Now, this is a very important thing, you know. People often say, well, I can just get this information from the book. Yes, you can. But then you get overwhelmed by the author and you never develop self-confidence. And in the process, you will always remain a learner uh, you'll really never be able to do what is known as self-studies 
and that's very important for developing self-confidence as, as well as creative thinking. Incidentally, you may discover a better method for solving the problem or find a mistake or presumption in the author's approach, giving yourself a head start for your research. And this is a very important part of starting research. Now, you should always write down the question or problem uh, that you, are, uh, you want to solve. Articulate it as precisely as you can. Then read and reread the question or problem and keep thinking about it. Keep jotting, writing whatever comes to your mind about the problem. Whenever you seem to be encountering a block, read the question again and repeat it mentally. Now long uninterrupted thinking, at least a couple of hours at a stretch, takes your mind deeper, thereby making you more creative. Talk to yourself internally about the different aspects of the problem. This way you preclude extraneous random thoughts. Now here I like to uh, share with you a, a, some very important uh, incident in my life that will ex ex really explain to you what I'm talking about. You know, when I, I was doing my master's degree at the Indian Institute of Science in the Department of Internal Commercial Engineering, in the final semester, uh, we had to work on a dissertation project. And I was asked to work on uh, analysis and design of exhaust mufflers. Now what happened was, though we had studied as many as 23 subjects during the previous three semesters, we had not studied acoustics at all. So I did, really did not even know where to start. In fact, my friends you know, advised me that to go back to the head of the department and request for a change in problem, rather than having the disadvantage or handicap of working on something about which I knew nothing. But then, you know, I took up the challenge. I went to the library and started looking around. And uh, while going through the uh, various papers, uh, I found that one common book was being referred to and that was uh, Fundamentals of Acoustics by Kinsler and Frey. And so I took up that book from the library and gave self, him, myself a crash course. I studied the whole book from one first page to the last page, solved all the exercises and prepared myself in acoustics. But it was during that time that I found that, you know, very little had been done on muffler acoustics. So again, you know, there is there are two ways of looking at it. One is that if nothing is known, then what do I do? And second is, if nothing has been known, well, here is an opportunity for me to fill up the gap. So I, I took up the challenge and started working on the problem. And I, exactly telling you what I'm telling you here, write down, write down the question of problem, articulate it precisely. Read and reread the question of problem and keep thinking about it. Keep jotting, writing whatever comes to your mind about the problem. And whenever you seem to be encountering a block, read the question again and repeat it mentally. And this is the most important thing, long, uninterrupted thinking, at least a couple of hours at a stretch, takes your mind deeper, thereby making you more creative. You know, in fact, this is how, you know, uh, I really found that I could really solve that problem without thinking that nothing was known about it. In fact, as I told you, I took it up as a opportunity rather than a handicap. Now I started solving those uh, various problems and all basically I would say analyzing, uh, what should I say, acoustic filters, one dimensional acoustic filters, making use of transfer matrices. And I really found that, you know, that some kind of pattern was developing. And I started thinking about the pattern. And uh, after a few uh, days of working on it, I found that yes, I was getting a you know feel of it. I continued working like this uh, almost for 
uh, two months, I worked almost 10 hours a day sitting in the library. And at the end of it, I had worked out for myself a, an algebraic algorithm, uh, which allowed me to write the final answer without having to write down the matrices, without having to multiply them, nothing at all. Okay. In fact, similar to what you can, what you can say, binomial theorem. Okay. So this is how, uh, you know, I developed entirely a new method. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I made a presentation during the seminar in the department, uh, everybody was simply surprised. In fact, there was a complete silence for several minutes after I stopped my seminar. And then the only question that was asked to me was, how did it occur to you? Now, what I want to share with you is that in this process, I developed a niche for myself and I could publish several papers in the Journal of Sound and Vibration, which is one of the best journals in my field. And thereby established for myself a field in which I was not only the pioneer, I was the leader and a continued to be leader for several years. Okay. Of course, another good thing happens, which again was incidental, but uh, uh, not very unrelated. And uh, all the uh, uh, teachers of the department, they were so much impressed by my uh, uh, progress that they uh, uh, stressed on the need to take me in the department as a lecturer. And in fact, they, my on, based on their recommendation, the head of the department wrote a strong recommendation to the director. Our director those days was Professor Satish Dhawan, uh, who later on also became chairman of Space Commission, etc. Now, uh, he was, of course, very reluctant in the beginning because I, I did, not, did not have PhD. And PhD was a must for lectureship in the Institute of Science. Anyway, so I, they really created a supernumerary post for me and took me in, and that is how I joined the department. So what I want to tell you is that, uh, I mean, I didn't have to appear any, for any interview or any test or anything, or satis not even satisfy the, the need of a PhD, but I was taken as a lecturer. So this is what I want to tell you, that nature has its own way of uh, rewarding you. Uh, if you make sure that, you know, you have that confidence in yourself. Now, what I want to say is enjoy the process of research. You know, we at IITs and IAS are privileged to be able to do research of our choice and we paid for it. In the search, favorable or exciting results come only once in a while keep ourselves going in the meanwhile, we must learn to enjoy the process of research. And research can be fun if you're not anxious for the desired results. Anxiety only delays results. Reward yourself for the smallest achievements. Breakthroughs happen, they cannot be planned for. So you must, must make sure that you uh, learn to reward yourself for the smallest achievements, and that is what will keep you going. And uh, this is very last thing that I want to tell you, very important. Do not be too sure about the research outcome. Leave room for serendipity. If results are not as expected, do not reject them outright. Maybe, maybe you, are ex you are expecting wrong results. And nature has a way of really uh, holding you, I mean, there and give you another result. And therefore, you should really respect it and try to think on those lines. Ask yourself, maybe this result, what I'm getting, that is what should be coming out. Okay. And I also want to tell you here that, uh, you know, I mean, large percentage, somebody said it's more than 50%. Uh, that is all the research discoveries that had happened in the world over the over this millennia you know, 50% or more, they happened by serendipity. When the scientist was working on something, he was expecting some results, but something entirely different was coming. And after uh, overcoming the, you know, initial uh, hesitation, he start, accepted it and went along with it and found that that was indeed the nature's way of telling that this is the correct result. So what I'm trying to say is, I repeat this last line, 
do not be too sure about the search outcome leave room for serendipity if results are not as expected do not reject them outright maybe you know that's the correct thing now being engineers i want to just tell you we should all work on practical problems now finding solutions for real life problems in your chosen field of research is very satisfying at the end of the day you open the door to consultancy services which in turn are desirable for placements for your students extra earnings for your institute via overheads as well as for yourself and your students and more than anything you get a chance to work for societal welfare now research papers based on practical problems are generally appreciated by editors of engineering journals now while working on practical problems often you come across gaps in basic knowledge which open up new venues of research here i like to share with you one thing that out of 200 odd papers that i have published uh, almost 45 were the result of the problems i picked up during consultancy when i saw something happening in the industry and i found that you know i did not have a solution for that again instead of getting discouraged i would uh, you know note it down go back think deeply about it and then actually often i would give that problem to one of my research students uh, to work on it and in fact many times uh, what came out of this was very very interesting and they were we were able to publish uh, some of those papers in the best of journals and not only that i want to also share with you another thing which just happened uh, more than two or three journals uh, uh, later approached me and asked me my permission to publish it in their journals though i had not published in their journal uh, but it was so practical and so useful they wanted my permission to publish it in their journals and in fact they also paid me uh, often 500 or 600 pounds as a fee for my uh, you know allowing them to publish in their journal so what i'm trying to say is that also gave me incidental publicity city around the world and not just in india and this is a very important thing i want to share with you be resourceful availability of sophisticated instruments is desirable but not always necessary often non availability of sufficient research funds is offered as an excuse for inadequate research output now challenge yourself to do with whatever resources are available you may in fact discover your latent capabilities in the process experimental and numerical simulations are often needed for corroboration of analytical predictions you may as well use measurement results reported in the literature for that or similar problems in fact you know whatever i was telling you earlier about uh, my discovering things uh, it was partly because uh, i was told by the department uh, head of the department that we they didn't have the kind of money that was needed to set up research facilities okay so again instead of uh, minding it or telling myself that oh in, in india we don't have facilities i should go abroad and do my phd abroad etc etc you know i took it is up as challenge and then developed for myself a niche and that is what is most important i want to share with you you know start start i uh, mean uh, stop you know uh, complaining you know take whatever comes your way and then challenge yourself and go forward and that's what i did and i really developed a niche for myself now this is very important thing i want to share with you you might ask you know is this is not a seminar on spirituality okay but i want to tell you that a calm mind is a prerequisite for creative research that's why i'm saying refuse to get disturbed there may be irritants all around but remember that getting disturbed or not is entirely your choice i repeat there may be irritants all around but remember that getting disturbed is entirely your choice learn to resist provocations 
and do not be jealous there is enough room for everybody under the sky now refusing to get angry is not only your own necessity but also the most disarming response to your adversary poor fellow doesn't know what to do he wanted to disturb you you didn't get disturbed you did not get angry so poor fellow doesn't know how to what to do with you so you know you are basically disarming your adversary and that's the best thing you can do somebody said very aptly remaining angry is like holding a hot coal in your hand with the intention of throwing it at your enemy you never throw it but it continues to burn your hand now continuing on this topic if somebody abuses you he obviously wants to hurt you by getting hurt or disturbed you are playing into his hands do not oblige him i want to read this reread the sentence please try to absorb it if somebody abuses you he obviously wants to hurt you by getting hurt or disturbed you are actually playing into his hands do not oblige him do not react immediately hold back think calmly and then respond if you must many times you don't have to respond at all i repeat do not react immediately hold back think calmly and then respond if you must <clears throat> now practicing unconditional forgiveness for yourself as well as everybody around is not only good for your physical as well as mental health but also is conducive to creativity in research finally i want to say all of our random thoughts are about the past or the future live in the present and see how creative you can be i repeat all of our random thoughts are about the past or the future now live in the present and see how creative you can be everything i am telling you from personal experience you know please now i just want to tell you here that uh, you know uh, how desirable it is to uh, practice industrial consultancy the consultancy gives you field experience this experience or exposure <coughs> excuse me <coughs> this experience or exposure enables you to impart practical knowledge and pose challenging problems to your students consultancy generates resources for your college as institute overheads and for yourself as your share of the consultancy fee and for your laboratory by way of equipment and consumables that you often get from the industry the exposure to industrial problems and possible solutions increases employability of your students now here i want to share with you that often you know uh, my students were the first to be picked up in campus interviews because they have, they have had you know uh, exposure to industrial problems while working with me you know industrial problems give you great professional satisfaction at the end of the day and that's what is because for engineer engineer that, that there is nothing better than he would ask at the end of the day whether whatever he did uh, it was useful to industry or not now often industrial exposure gives you problems as well as ideas for research development and innovation which which would eventually lead to innovative designs research publications and possibly a degree for your student now sometimes you attract practicing engineers from industry for a research degree to your university as external registrants 
this may bring some sophisticated instruments to your laboratory uh, in the process. Now I want to tell you here uh, in creativity, it's very important to develop uh, capability of mental mathematics. Often when I visit an industry as consultant, I have to do quick mental calculations of the noise reduction that needs to be achieved in a particular environment. The available alternatives like noise control measures and the cost and time implications of the consultancy projects. Detailed design calculations would have to await formal award of the project. The industry folks generally do not have patience and provision for a feasibility study. They insist on bar par figures by the end of the same day in order to decide whether they would initiate the project or not. Now here I'd like to share with you something interesting. My father, who was otherwise uneducated, was good at mental arithmetic. He had, double, he had memorized multiplication tables up to 20 by 20 and was able to earn his living by doing quick back of the hand calculations for the village farmers and shopkeepers in their day to day business. Now that inspired me during my early education to excel in arithmetic and eventually theory of numbers, algebra, trigonometry, mathematical induction, etc. In fact, it became fun and led to development of uh, magic tables, binomial theorem, etc. So everything I, I, all this I did, you know, when I was in the school, eighth, ninth, or tenth standard. Now, this is a very important thing I want to share with you. Uh, desirability of self-study. Now, when you listen to the teacher to a teacher in the class, you may not grasp or retain everything. You may have to supplement it in the evening at home, which you may not be able to do for some reason or the other. However, if the teacher tells you to study in advance what he or she is going to teach or discuss the next day, you will be alert in the class next day in order to clarify your well-articulated doubts. This self-acquired knowledge will remain with you forever. I repeat, this self-acquired knowledge will remain with you forever. And it has remained with me all my life, whatever you know, I did uh, as a part of my self-study in the school. Incidentally, during self-study, that is reading, and working out yourself, you will develop self-confidence, discover your potential, and would be ready for research as well as consultancy by the time you finish your course. This is how I have been training my graduate students for research at IASC. In fact, here I'd like to uh, share with you uh, a personal talked about during my first lecture a few months ago, but it's very relevant to bring out the importance of self-study. You know, after my uh, seventh standard, uh, we had some uh, holidays and I was playing the street cricket, but my elder brother, uh, he came and snatched me away from my friends saying that, you know, we cannot afford to do this. You know, we have to excel and all. I said, well, I have been, uh, you know, standing first in the school all, all these years. Uh, then, but my brother said, no, that's not sufficient. You must aim higher, you know. And then, you know, he said, you don't know, you have done up to seven standard, but eight standard mathematics is, is much tougher. And you have a board examination coming up in the eight standard. Okay. So he said, he said, no, you can't afford to be playing cricket and all that. You come and, you know, start working on your eighth standard. Anyway, what I did was <coughs> just to take him off my back, uh, I took up the uh, took up his actually book of eighth standard and uh, sat 
just with myself for about 10 to 15 days and solved the all the problems of eight standard after studying every chapter and then i went back and presented it to my brother and like a typical child i to, to ask him now can i go and play okay anyway so he was uh, in fact uh, surprised that i could do that but anyway what i want to tell you is something else by the, in the evening when i was by myself i realized that you know in the you know i i i could do everything myself and so i didn't need a teacher and not only that because i did everything myself i i in fact solved many problems by a different method which i developed by myself and it, it turned out that that was in some way better or or faster than what was given in the book okay and in fact more than anything i want to tell you that day in the evening you know i could not sleep at night all the time i was thinking that i had discovered myself i had discovered my potential and that that night and I, I i want to tell you it really changed my life whatever i'm telling you this desirability of self study etc etc everything took shape that night when i was talking to myself about what i had done in the previous 10 to 15 days okay so that that that's what has remained with me forever and that uh, that's why i thought i'll share with you this part uh, in fact i also want to tell you something else you know uh, it was during uh, ninth standard that my brother who was two years ahead of me in the school he was in 11th and he was really uh, complaining to along with his friends all of them they were saying what is this you know what did why, what did uh, uh, newton have to do you know why did he discover this uh, binomial theorem and it has made life difficult for all students so i was just uh, overhearing what uh, they were talking and i asked them i said what is this that you are talking about so then they they just, they just said oh you know see like for example you have a plus 2b to the power 5 10 or whatever you know you straight away you can write down the final answer instead of multi multiplying them over and over again okay so you wouldn't believe this conversation uh, took place at around six o'clock in the evening and that evening just after dinner we used to take dinner around seven o'clock from seven o'clock to twelve o'clock in five hours i was able to do develop all that they were talking about and not only a plus 2b or whatever a plus minus 2b and any power not, not just 5 6 10 or anything i could write down all the expressions straight away and without uh, actually going to those uh, binomial coefficients i developed my own way of doing things okay uh, so uh, next morning uh, i uh, showed to my brother that whatever he was telling i was able to do myself okay so what i'm trying to tell you is this again it was all part of discovering my potential okay and what they were complaining about i mean i was able to do in five hours time in the previous night okay so that's what i want to tell you here desirability of self-study and self-study really brings out the best in you and that is the start of really being creative now it's very important that uh, we should update uh, our knowledge continually learning does not end with graduation in fact in the present world where knowledge is expanding fast you have to make it a lifelong habit of self learning in order to improve and update your technical abilities one of the main objectives of every technical college should be to promote self learning i repeat one of the main objectives of every technical college should be to promote self learning physical insight and experimental skill may not suffice to solve an engineering research problem you will need to combine these with mathematical rigor in order to generalize your results and publish them in a reputed technical journal which is an essential requirement 
for a research degree. This is why in the Indian Institute of Science, applied mathematics is often taught by engineering faculty, not by faculty of mathematics department. In fact, many research students, the Department of Mathematics also attend our uh, courses coming in the engineering departments. So what I'm trying to tell you is this is another res a result of, uh, you know, developing a, a problem into an opportunity. You know, what happened was, uh, the, uh, these days, I'll, I'm sure you may be knowing that mathematicians don't recognize applied mathematics as mathematics. They think pure mathematics is mathematics. Okay, applied mathematics is not mathematics, it's, it's engineering. And this is why uh, the faculty of the de department of mathematics, in fact, refused to teach mathematics in engineering departments. They said, no, we, we are busy in research in mathematics. We cannot be teaching up applied mathematics. So we turned that uh, thing into an opportunity. We developed our own courses in applied mathematics to be taught to engineering uh, students. And not only they became so popular that now mathematics st students who want to learn applied mathematics, they come to engineering departments to learn. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, never think that if something suddenly some block has happened, that's the end of it. In fact, that block may be start of an opportunity. Now, another thing I want to share with you here, research and teaching go together. Research brings passion to teaching and the teaching rejuvenates the researcher. Because students ask you uh, questions and in order to answer that, you automatically uh, go deeper into the subject and that also helps you in research. If you want to learn a new subject, the best way is to offer an elective course on the subject. I have tried it successfully several times. When you try to answer the students' questions or clarify their doubts, the underlying concepts become much more clear to you in the process and that is important for research. You know, as water flows easily, when the water source is at a much higher level, knowledge is imparted better when the teacher is a specialist or an active researcher in the field. And in that, that's why I want to tell you here the teaching is much more effective at IITs or IASC because every teacher himself is a specialist and that really matters a lot because there's a lot of good gradient between him and the students. And when he speaks, the, the faith with which the student takes it is much more and, there, and therefore it's much more effective learning that happens. So this is what I want to tell you here. The research and teaching go together. Often, you know, some people say, oh, I have no time for research. I'm so busy in teaching. No, that's not right. In fact, you know, you can make it a pleasure, you know, by doing research at the same time and see what happens. Now, in the final slide here, uh, I want to tell you how important it is, it is to have incubation centers and research parks. The case study based teaching provides a holistic approach to engineering education. It challenges students to do their best. They learn much better from each other. You please note here that they can learn much better when they sit together and think about the same problem. And uh, you know, what really happens is the uh, concept or principle of mastermind comes into play when all four persons are thinking on the same problem with full faith uh, in each other. You know, what develops is a kind of mastermind and together uh, they come out with solutions which none of them individually would have thought at all. Okay, so this is a very important part I want to share you this principle of mastermind. Now project building promotes self-learning and builds self-confidence. It should become an integral part of the curriculum. Now of late, the concept of innovation uh, has been added to research and development. 
innovation consists in extracting value from a creative understanding of what is already known. I repeat this very important definition here. Innovation consists in extracting value from a creative understanding of what is already known. The Department of Science and Technology of the Government of India is sponsoring incubation centers at IASC, IITs, NITs, etc. Uh, they act as cradles for innovation and entrepreneurship. In fact, now, as far as I know, AICT is also encouraging it at private colleges. Uh, in this connection, as Professor M. S. Anand, former director of IIT Madras, uh, puts it, the university research parks bring together minds with different attitudes, faculty with knowledge of fundamentals, students with their spirit to conquer the world, and science and technology personnel from industry with their ability to convert ideas into marketable products. Well, you are associated with Anna University and IIT Madras is across your campus. So I can just uh, tell you, you know, that you can really participate in this whole exercise. Or as a group of faculty, and you will find that, you know, it is, uh, it's the best thing you can do to yourself. I repeat here, the university research parks bring together minds with different attitudes, faculty with knowledge of fundamentals, students with their spirit to conquer the world, and science and technology personnel from industry with their ability to convert ideas into marketable products. And finally, we should all try to develop sustainable technologies which would meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I repeat this, this is very important. This is, this is something we owe it to our children, our next generation, that we don't make use of resources in such a way that nothing is left or, I, or we spoil the environment for them. So I repeat here, we should all try to develop sustainable technologies which would meet the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. I think I'll stop here and uh, I, I'll be very happy to answer any uh, questions. In fact, the whole idea here is that, you know, if, if it has, my lecture has uh, made you think a little, you know, come on, share with me and let us do some brainstorming together and see if we can go further. Thank you very much. So any doubts from the any doubts from the participants? You can unmute your my uh, mic and you can ask if any of the participants have any. Excuse me, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes. Please sir, ask. Was, yeah. sir, I'm Lokesh from Second EDC Department. I have a small question for you. Yes, yes, please. Sir, do you think that creativity is a part of a human nature or is it something that must be nurtured or learned? Uh, I am trying to tell you the second part that you can nurture it. You know, let, let me let, let me just tell you here, you know, I, when I was in the fourth standard, uh, in our school, we used to have a prayer. And uh, then at the end of the prayer, once in a while, we would have a, uh, a, a lecturer, I mean, from outside educationist or psychologist uh, to talk to children. One day we had somebody and he made it during his uh, talk, he made a very nice statement. He says, Nobody is born genius. He said the brain to start with is like a clean slate. More you use it, 
more creative it becomes. I repeat, he said, more you use your brain, more creative it becomes. And this is a very important thing I want to tell you because that went deep into my mind. In fact, that is what changed my career completely. You know, I, I was, uh, you know, I belonged to a family who had come as refugees from West Punjab. We had no money and no, no education. In fact, my parents were completely illiterate. But then, you know, this statement completely told me that it's all my, my life. I can make what I want out of it. And from that day, I started challenging myself and playing with numbers and with every anything, you know, I would say, let me see if I do it myself. And in the process, you know, I really discovered myself. And uh, not only, it, I mean, my career was made because in fact, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, at the end of uh, 11th standard, you know, I, I got fifth rank in Punjab University. And that was a big thing those days because uh, what is presently Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, that used to be Punjab. And there was only one university in the whole state and that was Punjab University. So getting a rank was a big thing. But what I want to tell you is something else. God helps those who help themselves. You know, because I got fifth rank, it so happened that just in just five or six days after the results, the government of India started a new scheme. And uh, that scheme was uh, what they called a life scholarship for first 10 ranks of every university in the country. Okay. So I got that life scholarship, which really meant that I could uh, continue to uh, uh, read, I mean, study further, right up to PhD, and my, that scholarship will take care of everything. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, uh, you know, this all happened because, you know, I had come to that level that finally nature also helped me. So but anyway, I want to repeat this part that this lecture is about nurturing creativity, not depending on being born with it. Of course, if you are born with it, nothing like that. But, uh, but everybody cannot have that. And therefore, best thing is start using your brain right from childhood, you know, and stop making excuses to your teachers or to government or to your parents that you cannot do this because this is not there, that is not there. Be resourceful and see what how you discover yourself. And that's the best way to live. Mr. Lokesh, have I answered your question? Yes, sir. <clears throat> the answer was so inspiring for us. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other one have, want to ask? Sorry, doubts of um, good afternoon, sir. This is Fahim Anyaz here. Uh, my question to you is, um, what do you think is the biggest barrier in applying creative thinking in our um, careers or projects or everyday life? Like, what do you think is the biggest barrier? The biggest barrier, if any, is yourself. Stop, stop uh, you know, handicapping yourself by saying, oh my God, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't, you know, stop complaining. Some, start, uh, stop complaining to yourself, stop complaining to your parents, your teachers, to the government. So don't do that. Simply say, you will be resourceful. Say, I will be resourceful. Whatever resources I have, I'll make the best of it. Okay. And that is how the creativity is really developed. And my, my life before you is a living example of that. And, uh, you know, I just, just thought, you know, that I'll share with you this part. In fact, this is, let me also tell you, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Anil Sasarbute, uh, chairman of AICT, was my student. And it was during that time that you know, I shared with him, you know, all this, my ap approach. And uh, he liked it so much that later on when now he became the chairman of AICT, so he first thing he did was came to me say sir can you help all of us can you help all everybody in the country and that is how the scheme of aict distinguished uh, uh, chair professor was started in which they have chosen 12 uh, professors persons you know of uh, established uh, uh, scholarship and uh, we have been asked uh, we have been given 12 to 13 colleges each one of us and we are asked to really inspire you with uh, with these talks and preferably taking everything 
as example from our own life. Okay, so Fahima, have I answered your question? Yes, sir, you have. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, uh, sir, I have another question. Yes, yes sir. Who is the most uh, who is the most creative person that you have ever known? Still now, that who is inspired you? Like? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, when you are prepared, nature really helps you in uh, several ways. I'll again share with you a personal incident that happened to me. Uh, when I was uh, uh, studying in Punjab Engineering College, uh, Chandigarh, and uh, we, we had, uh, we came to, we were all brought to Bangalore, uh, in fact, in general south uh, for 20 days on an educational tour. Okay, we, we had a bogey, uh, broad, gauge, broad gauge bogey. Uh, with that, we came to uh, Bangalore. And now we wanted to visit Mysore. But those days, there was no broad gauge between Bangalore and Mysore. So we had to abandon our body at the, sorry, our bogey at the railway station and catch buses to go to Mysore. Now, you wouldn't believe, because of some, some miscommunication somewhere, I missed the bus. I was stranded in Bangalore when all my friends, everybody left for Mysore. And I, you know, uh, somebody said, and in fact, that I should go to uh, in the Institute of Science and I can stay there for a couple of nights uh, so that, you know, when uh, people come back, then they, I can join. But in that process, I, I tell you, that's the best thing happened to me in my, in my life. Because in, during those two days and nights, I discovered India Institute of Science. I did not know anything about that institute. But I found, you know, uh, what is, that was the best research uh, place uh, that I was looking for as a you know person like me who was like a born researcher. I, I wanted a place like that, and that is how I discovered that the kind of department, the environment, the library, the workshops, everything, and you know students working you know 24 hours. In fact, when I was staying there, I found at midnight. You know, the girls coming, you know, from the uh, biology departments after doing research experiments. And, you know, so, I mean, it was the kind of environment really I was looking for. And fortunately, uh, next year, I got admission in the industry of science without an interview and joined. And I have never left this institute after that. I did my master's degree here. I became lecturer. I did my PhD here. And... Uh, you know, eventually, in the, just I was 45 years a year old when I had all the awards like Bernagar Prize and fellowships, everything I'd already got. I became head of the department, later on head of the whole division of mechanical sciences and so on. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, nature helps you when you help yourself. Okay. And uh, no question of excuses and no question of saying who inspired me when you am when i'm prepared inspiration just comes my way and this was typical example of the nature bringing me to industrial of science making me miss the bus you know and discover myself in the whole process so have i answered your question yes sir that was so good to hear that thank you uh, maybe we can take one more last question. Anyone wants uh, to ask? Because sir has already waited for the half an hour for us. So anyone else? I have another question. Yeah, sir. please. please. Yes. Uh, what are the convergences and differences between critical and creative thinking? Uh, okay. Uh, basically, Critical thinking is done on something that is already known. For example, you know, uh, you have, uh, let's say you are, you go through a research paper and then you try to analyze that and then find out, you know, uh, what the person has done. And, but then, you know, you, 
you do a critical uh, uh, study of that paper to, in order to find out how you can now start your research, how what you can do next. Okay, but what I want to tell you here is creative thinking is a little different. And that is what I used to do. And let me share with you the procedure. I, I would uh, look at a new paper that uh, you know is in my field and I want to study. I would just study the, uh, what should I say, the abstract. Because that tells me generally what that person has done. And then I'll just give a casual uh, a look at the paper again to just find out what kind of approach he has used without spending too much time and then close the paper and i would tell myself all right can i do it and in the process you know i will not be overwhelmed by what that person has done i would try to do myself everything of course i will not be able to do so after let us say uh, uh, th thinking about it for a half an hour, one hour, sometimes two hours, I open the paper again and see, uh, you know, what that person has done and then take a hint again, again, close the paper, again, challenge myself. Okay. Now, in this kind of thing, uh, I'm now combining critical thinking with creative thinking. You understand what I'm saying? And often I found that I could do better than that person had done. So instead of getting discouraged by his method or his this one, I, I would at the end of uh, you know my study, maybe two days, three days, four days, you know, I would be so happy with myself. Yes, I did it. Instead of saying he did it and I understood it, I would be able to tell myself I did it. And this is something very important uh, which I also shared with my stu research students, uh, you know, and uh, try to tell them that that is what they should be doing. They should not depend on my telling them the solution. You know, I would tell them, you know, just go and think about it. And whatever little you can do, congratulate yourself, encourage yourself. This is something very important, you know. And that is how, uh, you know, I was able to make sure that my students did so well in there, you know, I have guided more than 18 PhDs, and I told you Dr. Sasabute was one of them. And these people also, in fact, they often they came out with uh, something uh, which even I had not thought of when I gave that problem to them. And but I was, I made that made them made me very happy because that is exactly the approach I wanted to, uh, you know, use. You know, instead of their being overwhelmed by me, they should learn from me the the process to do research, the way to do research. And that way to research, do research is that, that you know, combining critical thinking with creative thinking. So have I answered your question? Yes, sir, you have. Thank you so much. So also uh, anyone else, I think uh, we can stop the session now. So already we have extended beyond a half an hour waiting for the link. So uh, we thank uh, from our team at KCG College of uh, Technology and all the participants, the faculty participants would like to extend a heartfelt thanks to you uh, for your wonderful lecture. And uh, the key takeaway, which uh, maybe uh, everyone would have in their mind is how to start doing things on our own is the first step towards uh, creative thinking and not to think about the lack of resources to take everything in the possible side and uh, start uh, activating our brain cells on our own brain cells first. That will be the first step to creative thinking. So thank you for your wonderful session once again sir this is our second session together with kcg college of technology and hope uh, we have more sessions from your end and thanks for your help and for your guidance in uh, through the entire process uh, i would like to sir, uh, tell that sir is very helpful from the starting to the end, uh, sir is uh, helping us throughout uh, this uh, DPP uh, program. And uh, other than that, I would like to thank our director of uh, the faculty development cell for giving this opportunity to KCG College of Technology and the chairman ACT for all these uh, wonderful initiatives that you are doing for the faculty and for the students. 
And I also thank the media coordinator at the ANCP and to all the participants and all the questions that you have asked very wonderful questions that made the uh, session very interactive also. <laughs> yes, sir. Even few questions I, I never thought, but uh, the participants are very keenly listening to you. That's a proof of that. So thanks once again and hope to see all of you. You are welcome. And it was really a pleasure talking to everybody. Thanks, sir.